Good morning, Region 8. Today is Friday, April 18th. I'm Amanda Hansen. Breaking news this morning into the Region 8 newsroom. Federal Trade Commission does have the authority to go after these spammers. That is, if the agency can even track them down. The journey's only begun. Now, if you want some ways maybe to eat healthy this holiday season, maybe adapt an old recipe. If you've ever had someone close to you commit suicide, you know it's something that just sticks with you. Now, that's something that you might want to check into because accreditation means accountability. With the weight loss journey underway, I think they're all just excited to get those first results, those first few pounds lost. And of course, we'll be alongside for the ride. Good morning, Region 8. Today is Thursday, April 17th. I'm Amanda Hansen. And I'm Blake Wynn. And at Truman School Board members held a meeting last week that started at night, went into the morning. Well, they met again last night. We're going to have the latest details on their decision on the future of one of their employees there. We'll have that in just a minute, but we're going to kick things off with a look at your day out there today, starting off a little bit colder but getting better. Police arrested the OBGYN accused of taking new photos of at least one of his patients. He is in custody this morning. Officers arrested him in Newport. According to Bob Clark with the U.S. Marshal Service, Dr. Paul Becton Jr. was arrested at the Fortune Inn Motel in Newport last night. Now take a look. These are some pictures that were sent in to us by a KIT viewer, Stan Fortune. Clark says that Newport Police and Arkansas State Police made that arrest and Becton surrendered without a, any incident. He is back in custody on Greene County. Many of his patients are concerned over these allegations and prosecuting attorney Scott Ellington says if a nurse was present during your exam, you are not one of the women that Dr. Beckman's um, took photos of. This clinic is now closed and his patients, some of them pregnant, are forced to find a new doctor. If you're looking for a new doctor, AMMC says it does have coverage in place should an expectant mother present herself to the medical center in labor. The medical center is also currently working um, to explore all options available out there to attempt to fill the gap in coverage for prenatal and post delivery care for the community. Authorities are passing out flyers within Pemiscot and Dunklin counties to try to get help solving an investigation. As of now, there are no suspects in a murder and arson investigation in the Missouri Boot Hill. The case began last week when someone found Roy Gerald's body inside of his burnt home in Pemiscot County. Police say he had been shot. The Sheriff's Department is offering a $5,000 reward. It's been sir. Gerald's funeral is today, and investigators say if you have any information, give them a call. They, we've posted the contact information for the department on KEITA.com. A Jonesboro man will spend three decades behind bars after pleading guilty to child porn charges. Now, once released from jail, Sean Rolette will also be on probation for the rest of his life and will register as a sex offender. Prosecutors charged Rolette in January of 2012. He was accused of producing and possessing child porn. As part of the plea deal, other charges, including rape, have been dropped. General Motors wants protection for some legal claims. The company wants to be shielded from claims of conduct that happened before its 2009 bankruptcy. Over 2.5 million GM vehicles are being recalled. That's all over faulty ignition switch problems that can knock out the engine, power steering, brakes, and airbags. The company is accused of not taking action on this issue, even though they knew about it a decade ago. And later today, the Jonesboro School District is hosting a Common Core informational session for parents out there. The session will cover Common Core literacy, math, curriculum, and assessments. The event is open to all JPS parents, faculty, and staff. It's set to begin at 6 o'clock tonight at the Jonesboro Central Office. The Arkansas Highway Transportation Department is hosting a public involvement meeting in Greene County. Officials will discuss proposed plans to widen Highway 412 between Highway 67 and Highway 141 one in Lawrence and Greene counties. It will be from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. inside Fellowship Hall at Light Baptist Church. For more information, just call 501-255-1519. And today is a big day for Ford and one of their most popular cars. Yes, it is. It's the 50th anniversary of the... These are just a few of the pictures of the mold I found in the rental home where Iris Greenway lived with her two children. You can see the walls are covered with this dark stain from the baseboard to the window seal all over the home. Really? She claims that her landlord Ralph Wood called two companies to get an estimate about how much the mold removal would cost. One didn't want to risk their health. The other said that Wood would not like their estimate. In the end, neither company was hired and she says the mold is still there and it may have made her sick. I couldn't breathe. My rib cage feels like they're caving in on me. How frustrating has this been? 
Perry. This is Iris Greenway's rental home at 616 North 7th and a half street in Perigold, where she's lived for nine months. When she found out about it, she called her landlord, Ralph Wood, about it back in November. When we started moving things, we found the hole, more mold, and then it goes all the way around, even in the windowsills. This is how the home looked back in February. Walls covered with hundreds of black rings. And this mold is so bad, just look at the window seal here. You can see it lines the window seal, goes all the way down the wall to the floorboard. And what's even worse is Iris's mattress was butted up against the wall. When we raised it up, I saw it. It was sopping wet and black. I was born with lung problems. I've got asthma, emphysema, and COPD. You know, so I was used to waking up, coughing, couldn't breathe but it just got worse. Iris was even diagnosed with a lung infection. As you can see, this letter from her doctor states the mold in the house could be the underlying cause. He told her to move out. I live on Social Security. I can't afford to just up and move. I don't even have a vehicle. I did have, but I sold it to be able to get my kids Christmas. He charges $525 a month a year. What exactly is growing on these walls? I pulled my own sample and went to the Department of Biological Sciences at Arkansas State University. Now we're ready to look at it. Where Dr. Martin Huss put it under the microscope. The load of spores in the sample that he brought me is, is very high. I mean, that's not a minor amount. You do have a variety of things on here. I definitely see Alternaria and Cladosporium. They're both quite prevalent. Both are common indoor molds. Oh, I see it, yeah. Under the microscope, all those brown clusters are alternaria. Cladosporium is often what you find on a shower curtain. Now, if you just have like a little patch of mold, uh, then, you know, we're not talking about taking down the entire wall. Yeah. You know, what you're showing me is an extreme example, but if you had like just like a little tiny patch of mold, she probably could use a disinfectant. Again, based on your photos, I would think that you'd have to take more aggressive steps. Huss says the biggest thing is finding the underlying that. problem. These molds thrive where there's access to moisture. You have any sort of moisture coming into the house, uh, either from the plumbing or from outside source, you need to correct that problem. What's gonna end up happening is, is six months, a year later, you're gonna end it up with the same right problem. Dr. Huss says he wouldn't wanna be living in a home with that amount of mold. Personally, I wouldn't want to be breathing in that, this much stuff. See these uh, round cir circular uh, yeah. areas? Those represent individual colonies producing large numbers of spores. Remember, a lot of these molds, they're naturally occurring in the environment, but we just don't sleep with them every night. Dr. Shane Spites says when it comes to these type of molds in your health, it often depends on the individual. We've seen all over, like I said, all over the place, from seeing them in the clinic with a little bit of runny nose and cough congestion to in the intensive care unit. Spite says mold infections are not like viral or bacterial infections and could mean weeks or months of treatment, not to mention costly. When it comes to Iris's condition, Spite says the mold can pose more of a risk. The problem with people with asthma or COPD is it's gonna, you're going to have more frequent flare-ups. Those flare-ups can be life-threatening, and we see that frequently. You've reached the offices of Ralph Wood. I left several messages with Ralph Wood, the owner, but he never returned any of my calls. I did some research on his background and found that Ralph Wood was cited for failure to abate nuisance upon two different occasions, once in 2004 and another in 2010. Officials with Pericle Police tell me that type of violation is in regards to maintaining a property. The department no longer had a record of the report from 2004 because of software changes, but the incident report from 2010 did not have a description of the cause. Only to say Mr. Wood was cited to appear for a location at 302 South 22nd Avenue. Well, he told us that this heater here works. When Iris and I wrapped up our interview, she had one thing in mind. To get my stuff out of here and get my kids out of here. A week after our interview, Iris was finally able to move out of the home. We never were able to find out why the mold was not removed, but if you want to learn a little bit more about some of the most common indoor molds and preventative measures that you can take, we have a link to the CDC website attached to this story at KITA.com. Amanda Hansen, Region 8 News. You're about to meet Jane. She loves to cook, spends a lot of time in her kitchen and invites her big family over every Sunday for her home made from scratch recipes. But can her kitchen stand the test of the health inspector? Take a look.
You know, I've never inspected a person's home before, uh, so this is going to be interesting. Go to the front door. Danny Eddy is a Craighead County Health Inspector. Come in. Jane Kirton, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you today. Hi, man. Meet Jane. Do you going to ace this, or what are you thinking? Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is wash my hands. Okay. Well, here goes nothing. And it's time to suit up for the white glove inspection. I would start in their walk-in cooler, uh, looking at temperatures. And number two, to look at the food, how it's stored, uh, how they're cooling food, all that type of thing. Uh, so I will check the temperature against this one. And your cooler is saying 39 degrees. Looking good. Eddie says safe temperature is anything 41 degrees or less. You have your eggs up on a upper shelf, and I would always recommend that the eggs, any meat, anything like that, be stored on a bottommost shelf. Your eggs will sometimes crack, and I have actually seen them ooze out of the carton and over everything underneath them. I did not know that. I did not know the need to be stored lower in the refrigerator, so that's a good thing. Um, also, check food for expiration dates. I would have them date it as of the day that they made this, and they would have seven days to use it. Fridge is done. Just you have a pantry. That's a great pantry. Not real organized, but it's a pantry. <laughs> we would be looking to see that you wouldn't have chemicals. Oh, no. All the food uh, at least six inches up off the floor. One uh, insect control. The other to keep chemicals from getting on food when you clean the floor. So far, Jane, not too bad. What's next? We do also look at as microwaves. Um, and one of the easiest things to miss on a microwave, yours is nice and clean here, is that if you don't cover food, it will splatter up to the top. The food stuck up there could create bacteria that might lead to a foodborne illness if it gets into other foods you heat up. Almost done. Floor is good, easily cleanable. It's a little bit dark. Countertops are, are nice. Um, could be easily cleaned and sanitized. Ooh, homemade brownies. I had to sneak one before we wrap things up. I approve. Well, how, how do you think she, she weighed out with, with the inspection? When can I come to lunch? Just any day. Okay, that'll be good. Just that'll be good. Time. Just schedule it. She, you did very well. Thank you. Very well. Thank you. And just one more tip, Eddie says, when you thaw out food, it's best to do it in the refrigerator and not to just lay it out because there's a chance the food could sit in an unsafe temperature for too long. I do want to note that the inspector did have to alter things just a little bit from a commercial kitchen to do a home kitchen, and the food was not prepared at the time of the inspection, so that played a role too. For a closer look at what the food inspection check sheet looks like, you can find it on our website, KITA.com, just by clicking on this story. Amanda Hansen, Region 8 News. Region 8 woke up to a picturesque scene as snow blanketed the ground and rooftops, but had many saying snow in March? Up in the Sabies, here it is down in the 20s and 30s and snow. You never know around here, huh? No, ma'am, not in northeast Arkansas, you don't. And as for the roadways, not too bad. Left a little early today because of the weather, sir, but once we got on the road, it was pretty, it was pretty good. According to Alan Walter, the district maintenance engineer with the Arkansas Highway Department, crews started coming in between 7 and 8 o'clock Thursday night and worked in shifts to clear the roads throughout Region 8. Lawrence and Randolph counties were listed as some of the worst hit areas. Walter was pleased, though, that the roadways weren't as bad as they thought they would be, and drivers agree. I was expecting to be a little bit worse, the road condition being a little bit worse. It's not as slick as I thought it was. Work with the highway department wrapped up in Green, Mississippi, Poinsett, and Craighead counties by around 7 o'clock this morning. And while the snow is melting off fast, wet roads could still pose a danger for drivers. Amanda Hansen, Region 8 News.